you there. Thank you for watching. And welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today I have a 6v6 custom match here on the most amazing Naroxis map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. And with 12 players in the game, I'm going to slow it down to negative three. Do we have enough time for introductions and early game play coverage? Starting off with team one here on the western edge of the map. Starting off in the southwestern corner of the map in Imperial Great is Ice Crow going first land as an Aeon. He is a 2,000 rated player, the highest ranked on team one and in the game overall. Continuing on northward, we have in Rust, Mythologist going first line as a Seraphim. He is a 1,400, and again, he's going first land, almost said team two's player. In Ruby Red, we have Corn going first line as a UEF. He is also a 1,400. And slightly to his northeast, we have the UEF commander of Squealer going first land. He is an 1,100. In lightish red, pink is west. The best color and faction combination in the game is Neutron going first land. He is UEF in forest green as an 1800. And in the northwest corner of the map in Pac-Man yellow, we have Karl Marx going first land as a Seraphim. Again, he is a 1600. So for team one side of the map, they have three UEF, two Seraphim, and one Aeon. They lack the access to Cybern technology. Starting off in the northeast corner here for team two is Gorthral going first and first line second air as a seraphim in royal blue. He is an 1800 tied for the highest rank on his team. And again, he is a seraphim to his south in regal purple. We have the cyber commander of Moristo going first land. He is in, like I said, regal purple at a 1600 rating. To his south in orange to color orange, we have Ilmir going first line as an Aeon. He is a 1300. And slightly next to him, we have Little Miss Murder going first air as a Cyber. And she is a 1200 in Barbie pink. To her east, we see in Tropical Ocean Blue, we have Godzilla going first land as an UEF. He is that 1800 tied with Gothral in the north. And again, he is... UEF and last but not least in the southeast corner of the map it is Kennedy 090 going first land and second air he is a 1700 and again in Chevy Crimson so for team two side of the map they have at least one of each of the factions represented they have a dual major in Aeon and Cybern Tech so they have one UEF and one Seraphim remaining so for 12 players on the map, we have currently still on the map in the form of Reclaim, 17,000 mass. Well, actually, a little bit over that, about 18,000. So about 1.5K per player to scoop up is a decent amount of mass, especially we are in 12-player games here. And let's take a look at the mass points to be claimed. Uh, it's kind of hard. Let's just do right about here, just directly down the middle here between Team 1 and Team 2. We have one Trimex here, one Trimex here, a Quad Mix, another Quad Mix, and a Trimex. So at least one, two, three Trimexes and two Quad Mixes. So everybody but one player will get at least one of those formations. I do see a lot of conflict brewing at least between these two players, whoever ends up grouping or getting these two. And then again, of course, in the north. And in the middle, it's kind of interesting because the mass points... Over here in the middle are opposite, kind of a couple of these hillocks here, kind of these mountain peaks, valleys. Looks like someone like rode their dune buggy or something on this one. But uh, it's going to be very interesting, kind of hard to get through the middle. But I expect to see a lot of kind of swing around. I just made the yin yang sign there, like the little dot, the little dot. Anyway, there'll be a lot of kind of back and forth. I expect in the middle, kind of trying to outmaneuver their opponents. And without further ado, at two minutes and 11 seconds on the clock, we're going to start by bringing this game up back to zero. And, of course, I still have that stupid stupid glitch on my screen. I don't know why it's still there. I tried to mess with my settings once again. It's still not gone away. And I even tried to get rid of a couple of these columns on the mini-map to give us a little bit more view on the map. I don't think a lot of play, a lot of you really like to see how many units one player has. I mean, maybe someone does like seeing that. The score, same thing. The score is... Not really that revel relevant. I mean, I don't know if you're trying to do like a comparison build of who's doing what faster. Usually the higher score usually has the better APM. That's kind of how sometimes that's how that works. That's not necessarily true, but 
I, I don't I don't get a whole lot of info out of the score column, kill loss ratio, or the army score, or the kill built score, or the unit score. So try to get rid of those. There is an option in options to get rid of them. It just doesn't do anything. So if anybody knows how to just modify a little bit of this, please let me know down in the comments. But with three minutes on the clock, let's go ahead and talk about what's going on between our players. We are seeing movement out of here from Team 1 to the southern portion of the map. Both Mythologists is almost there to claim his trimax, and Ice Crow is moving in to assist. We do see Little Miss Murder moving into the middle to try to, again, thwart the incoming nature of Mythologist. We haven't seen Godzilla move from his base yet, or Kenny Lee, so essentially right now it's a 2v1 scenario in favor of Team 1 on that southern side we do see columns minimum from the middle here for squealer and for corn he'll be facing off against ilmer here in the east and again still a 2v1 scenario in favor of team one we do see a 2v1 scenario in favor of team two currently here between gothral moistol and Karl marx i still wouldn't be surprised to see neutron move in that direction to assist but it looks pretty merit here between the two teams, except for Team 2 not moving their comms as much to the middle as I thought they would be, with essentially two of the players not moving from their main bases. I wouldn't be surprised if they both go for air and see two players on Team 2 at a minimum go for T3 air. And that will be an advantage for them as the time goes on, but of course for the early gameplay coverage and the nice expansions going on for everybody, it will give Team 1 just that slight advantage. We do see a group of Selen trying to move on this northern side. Little Miss Murder, I don't think she'll notice. I don't think she will. At least Selen will get a nice kind of hook around Team 2's front line. These do get pinged by Team 2, but there is also nothing to stop them. I am kind of surprised to see no bombers or anything outbound from Team 2. And these do get pinged by Team 2 as well. So there is a nice little tank online. Little Mantis going after those Salens. The Salens actually giving that Mantis a run for its money. And drops that Mantis pretty close to death. Actually does kill off the Mantis, but also gets killed off as well. That group of Salens are killed off. But there is a couple of Engineers on their way to be killed off by the Salen and a Tham. But it does look like Kenny Lee is going to come and assist as well as Godzilla. Uh, so it's going to be a 3v2 in favor of Team 2. On the southern side of the map. Let's see how that shakes things up. But again, both these players look like going to stick primarily to, I think, air production would be my guess. Just due to the fact, well, I mean, Godzilla's already on his T2 upgrade, to be fair. So it's definitely going to be the case here, most likely, for these southeastern players. On the middle side here for Team 2, we do see T2 on the way here for Ilmer. He is not the first comp to go for an upgrade. But it is one of the early ones. We do see gun speed and range going down here for Little Miss Murder. And Ice Grow, her opponent in the west, going for that range upgrade. Starts with the first upgrade, the best, the better of the two upgrades for the Aeon Gun Commander. I prefer the range and then speed. We do see T2 coming all the way for Karl Marx. And Gorthral, it is Cyber, sorry, Seraphim versus Seraphim in the north. And there are some Sirens mixed in as well. And it, like I said, it is looking like a 2v2. We are seeing some support out from Squealer to assist a little bit against his opponent, of Moisto. But again, not having a come on that front line definitely will give Team 2 the advantage for the time being. We do see Gun Speed and Rage started here for Mythologist as well. Both of the comms here in the Southwest for Team 1 going for upgrades. Of course, range is already done and speed is underway. Kenny Lee moving in as well as uh, Godzilla kind of just running around getting some reclaim here. He is closer than what he was, so it's better than nothing. But his T2 air facility is online. His opponent, Flash Mirror of Neutron, going to build one more engineer and start his T3 upgrade. So he's actually a little bit faster than Godzilla. So definitely Team 1 will probably get T3 air faster than their opponent, which could be big, but it just depends if Team 1 goes for Bomber or not. If they go for ASF, it could make... Uh, some difference, but going for Bomber definitely can just decimate Team 2, especially if they're not prepared for it. We do see units kind of spreading that front line here for Team 2. Go throw out. Just going to build a nice little wall section. And just hanging out, I don't think... He's building a wall section just to prevent any sort of annoyances, but I don't think units can actually... Tr uh, uh, no, I think that I think that angle is too, uh, too uh, high. I don't think any units can climb that. T2 coming on the way here for Squid in the middle of the map. Not the best position, 
but it does have a radar for some early enemy detection, so it isn't a huge issue if he does have to retreat. I don't like having to restart upgrades, but if you have to, you have to. It just is the way of things. We do see those units outbound from Team 1's Mythologist. They went north, but now they have to convert back down south against Little Miss Murder, who's pushing against Mythologist. He has dropped into the yellow, and it's a calm v calm with a gun upgrade here, but the units are now overpowered at Team 1's and are not going to push against that front line. Lots of some Zooey's being brought up for defensive measures, but that Little Miss Murder commander will be able to revert. Look at that over... Oh, that <laughs> overcharge looked like it was going to miss. Got a couple of Ilshis with that. Shots are inbound. There they go, trying to rain fire down from the heavens against the Little Miss Murder. And as long as she keeps moving... Whoa, that overcharge. There it goes. <laughs> I really like to swing those... Uh, looks like a, uh, a curveball here coming out here from Little Miss Murder. Not a huge fan of baseball. Haven't really... I don't think I've actually sat in and watched a game on TV. I've been to a game, but... I don't think I've actually sat down and watched it. I'm not a huge fan. I prefer either basketball or football. I feel like it's a little more entertaining for me. But then I also like watching like World Series of Poker and those types of games as well. So I'm kind of this really weird branch of like I like hyperactive, likes to watch hyperactive sports, and uh, not really so much. I did play. I did sort of kind of play golf for a tiny bit, but uh, it was very very much a tiny bit. I mainly just went with my dad when he would get lessons from one of the one of his friends but that combo of little miss murder will be taken out by the dual commanders outbound for mythologist and for ice crow as i was kind of narrating here he was just sitting here watching little miss murder be killed off g is the first casualty of the game at nine and a half minutes team one at six players left team two at five players left i wouldn't be surprised to see probably godzilla will get con uh, i don't know maybe kenny lee will gain control of this yep he will going for land that definitely makes sense why he would get control of that. We can see the 2v1 scenario here in the middle of the map for Team 1 working very well, splitting Team 2's attention between the north and the south. And now Tactical Missile coming online for Korn. Maybe we'll see another repeat of a nice little UEF Billy Nuke nastiness that we saw in the previous game. Man, th those backpack nukes are um, dangerous, to say the least. We you see a crow going to push forward against, again, dual commanders here. Godzilla, not Godzilla and Kenny Lee facing off against Crow. Crow has the Aeon Sniper Commander, not the shield on board, but uh, does at least have some sort of prowess in that regard. And Godzilla just going to push even without any sort of upgrades on board. He's just going to go for it, I think. But no, no. Oh, once he comes out of range, Crow still can fire at him, but uh, just for a little bit. And there he goes. He does retreat to a safe distance in the southwest. We did see a nice little drop outbound here from Team 2. A lot of PD were built kind of to annoy Team 1. That tri that quad mix position actually be we should have killed, but no E for overcharge, says Godzilla. Probably should have killed a high shredder player on Team 1. Probably should have, but uh, I don't know. I says I'm out, says uh, Squealer. Don't know what that stock. What do you mean I'm out? What? Of E? talking about energy that was your uh, Karl Marx that was your lane don't know what's going on thanks what oh oh in the oh talking about over here to the northwest the uh, little miss murder is like what's going on dude that was yellow's lane says squealer oh that's gonna hurt look at this move outbound from team two just crushing this player's base oh man squealer over here in the middle probably should have rotated north but all those mexes are down. The T2 air land headquarters, excuse me, is just suffering here. All of the mass is focusing the mass. There it goes. All of the mass points are gone. The units are taken out, but I mean that doesn't matter. It's severely handicapped squealer for the time being. That's what he meant by he's out. And it's just I mean, all that effort to push the middle of the map and now your entire base is gone. Yeah, Karl Marx, that was his lane to be fair, but Team 2, one of their players is just kind of just hanging out. The other player, Mui, was the one that really pushed. So it was really a 1v1, and I don't know, I feel like Squeezer could have diverted at least a little bit more of an effort to at least hold that northern side, or that southern side of the northern lane. It's, I don't know. I just don't know about that. But there are T1 bombers inbound going after, looks like the T2 Pigeon. In, there are some interceptors and some ASF coming in to well intercept. It will do some damage to the Pigeon, but will not kill it off. 
Thanks to, in part, some of those ASS for Team 1. Team 1 has access to T3 Air Technology. Team 2 does as well. And Team 2 now have access to T3 Land. I mean, it is dual base here for Kenny Lee in the southeast, so that does make sense. I don't see any T3 Land on Team 1. I wouldn't be surprised to see the upgrades be pretty close to being done. Started. Uh, not yet. Not Obviously not yet. And nope, so Team 2 has the land advantage for now, but in the middle, Ilmer being pushed back by Korn's forces. Korn, of course, does have the missile launcher upgrade on board his commander. Maybe he'll go for Billy Luke, maybe he won't, but I don't know where he's going to launch that thing. Hasn't launched it yet, hasn't killed anything, but maybe we'll try to, try to open up some sort of avenue of attack. There are a couple of TMD down here for Godzilla. There's one more over here, so that missile... I mean, it's not going to do a whole lot of damage. It's actually going to go strike Ilmer's PD directly. That will force him back and allow him to continue pushing in terms of that PD lineup. Does have halfway up to his first veterancy. And Squealer's still going to push. Isn't going to give up. Just going to PD creep essentially what his other UBF teammate is doing here on the southern side. They're just slowly squeezing the life out of Team 2's middle lane. Not looking good here for Team 2. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see at least maybe one player rotate to assist or even see artillery be built here on this southern edge or something. We do see the mythologist now coming in from this northwestern direction instead of directly from the west. Why is it so laggy, says Godzilla? I don't know. Probably because of me, says Little Miss Murder. Oh, because she's dead? I mean, good luck, have fun. It looks like she's just going to jump on out, so it helps the, uh, the lagginess kind of fix. We'll see if that... I don't think that's usually the... I mean, sometimes it does happen, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, I mean, obviously, if you die, you obviously want to watch the rest of the game. But when it's this early, it, it's kind of hard to stay in. Just like uh, Little Miss Murder said, it might just be because, you know, trying to connect and you're not playing and all that. But uh, we do see some nice little ASF swasp online here for Team 2's Godzilla. They're looking to be swarmed by the green ones outbound from Neutron. That's going to hurt. There are some harbingers online. And Ice Crow is coming into range. These do get spotted by Team 1. Will he push? I don't know. Kenny Lee just going for more PD and trying to force back this push outbound from Team 1. But those harbingers are coming into range of those commanders. And Mythologist is going to go, mm, I don't like that. Same thing with Crow. Crow has two-star veterancy. Mythologist has two-star veterancy as well. The PD opening up going to focus fire on Mythologist's commander. We do see Kenny Lee re retreating in the face of that as well. All of those T3 units moving northward, but it does look like Kenny Lee notices that it's not going to be enough firepower to push back Team 1. Mythologist does drop into the low yellows, almost into the red, actually. But he'll get a veteran see here. There he goes. Get some nice amount of hit points, and Team 1 will still be pushing back against Team 2 on the southern edge of the map. In the north, it's just, what the heck is this? I mean, I know you want to break up the... <laughs> uh, pathing for team one but this is a little excessive it's like uh, watching I think like Revolutionary War just having lines and lines of like on a hill and it is sort of on a hill just a bunch of little tiny trenches and oh it's more I guess that's trench warfare yeah it's been like that for a while but uh, it's kind of just really messing with the pathing doesn't really allow for team one's units to really move in and gun spinning range on board here for him as well T3 also coming in line here for me in the north and Team 1 now gained a huge amount of territory over Team 2. They have more than 50% of the map underneath their control. Multiple T... Not T3, but multiple tri mex positions. Or at least being denied for Team 2. It looks like one of them will actually be grabbed by Team 1. Team 2 is... You know, they're suffering here in that mass department. We can see in terms of the mass points on the map. Not necessarily mass generation. Team 1's actually kind of behind. A little bit more focused on expansion. Team 2 is a little bit more focused on uh, that uh, upgrading and keeping what mix is what they had originally. 200 mass income here for Kenny, 150 for Godzilla, and everybody else at 100 or a little bit less than that. Team 1's players have only broken 150 for now. I mean, it is a little bit of a jump start when you have two bases, to be fair. But, you know, that having that extra mass does make a difference as time goes on. Team 1 artillery just going to spam... And go after that T2 Max. T2 Max will not... Oh, 1,200 hit points left. One more shot would have did it in. But the Harbinger saved the day. Lost it all, says Kenny. Yep, they lost it all. 
That's got to suck, but again, they do have T3 sooner than their opponents. That could be the difference between killing off a player or not on the southern edge. If Team 2 were to claim either Mythologist's or Ice Crow's head, that will force the other player at least back to a minimum and allow them to push back. And it do look like those Harbingers are going to move in once again. Team 2 being very, very defensive in the middle because they have to. They're facing a war on two fronts. Both of the comms for Team 1 not really pressing the issue. One firebase up here to the north. It's just firebase wars between Aeon and UEF. The UEF will win the fight sooner rather than later. And Korn just spamming up some missiles. Now has two 2600 mass killed on board his commander. And has killed off this mechs. And I think this mechs maybe the Team 1. No, the Team 1 artillery did that at 5 star. Very rare to see a 5 star veteran scene. T1 mobile light artillery of the Zooey. It will be killed off here. 1,600 mass killed off and probably even more. And the attack does commence once again. Team 1 having to retreat. Decent amount of T3 Harbingers. T3 Harbingers now being spammed out here by Ice Crow as well. So that advantage will slowly go away here for Team 2 on the land side of things. And still in the north, just kind of just hanging out. Looks like it's just artillery wars essentially right now between Team 1 and Team 2. T2 PD being spammed up here by Carl. Actually, excuse me, it's T3 mobile artillery. My apologies, not T2 stationary or static artillery. It does look like Squilla has rotated some forces over here to the north to assist in defensive measures on that side of the map. Definitely a better improvement in that regard just to ensure Team 2 doesn't push. But Mui not really pressing the issue on the northern side as well, kind of being a little bit lax, but it looks like he's scaling his eco up and trying to catch up with his teammates in terms of that mass generation. He's doing a pretty good job about it. He's at 143 currently. We do see the ASFs are just in full swing here between both teams. Team 1 has a slight advantage over Team 2. They start a little bit sooner, so that does make a difference. But Team 2, of course, does have a little bit more. Uh, it's kind of back and forth. I feel like Neutron does have a little bit better deal. He might have a couple more mixes. Uh, yeah, maybe about the same amount of mixes here. Versus Godzilla, but the Harbingers are at least slowly started to accrue and claim this territory for themselves. We do see Ilshis being spammed up here to the northern uh, hill, plateau, whatever the heck you want to call it. And Team 1, at least on the southern edge, has been pushed back by a bunch of T2 units. There's even a Percy in there. I'm very surprised to see Korn just retreat. Maybe he was just retreating in general. But we do see on the northern side of things in the middle, Team 1 Squid being forced back. Miasma Fire were just ruining defenses. That AoE, Splash, Poison, Acid, whatever nonsense you want to call it, damage. That Miasma damage, essentially, just wrecking these defenses. Squid is still on that line. He hasn't given up just yet. But there are a lot of T2 Blazes that have been thrown to the front line. And the missiles are raining in from T2 Mobile. And T2 artillery not giving up. There goes another Miasma shot. Takes out that clean camera. There's only one left online. The TMD cannot keep up with the missiles outbound from Team 2. And Squirtle will be forced to retreat in that regard. Probably why Korn just retreated slightly because he was fearing some sort of pincer maneuver from the northern side and isolating him. And he does actually just go back to base. And, oh, missile will launch and then he'll go back to base. It looks like going after... Uh, looks like he's going after some Harbingers it looks like. That's where that missile looks like it's going. You can see it just sailing over. Eh, that is the trajectory. But it is going to miss. Those harbingers did move. Would have liked to grab one or two of those, but alas, is not the case here for poor Yorlik. And at 20 minutes, four, 50 seconds on the clock, Team 2 is at 9.33 for mass income. Team 1 has gained a lead at 9.60. Team 1 has all players left alive. No, left alive. They have all players still alive. Team 2 has lost one of their players, that being Little Miss Murder. And in terms of map control, it's, it's about 50-50. I'd say a little bit of advantage to Team 1 because they still have this Trimex at least denied for Team 2. But in the all scheme of things, it's essentially about 50-50. Let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win the game. Of course, please, if you haven't done so already, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification button, and of course, share this video with anyone, everyone, especially pets. And, all, and of course, and especially, thank you so much for watching. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Even if it's for a second, a minute, an hour, depending on how long the casts are, I do appreciate every single minute of your time or second of your time. So again, thank you so much for watching. Squealer trying to mount some sort of, you know, 
Resurgence in the middle of the map here, trying to spam up some T2 TMD to assist in that, but those missiles are raining in and artillery as well. I don't think this is really going to go his way. And you can see the Miasma Fire just digging in. The TMD is not adequate to the cause. He is in the yellow and is slowly falling. He needs to keep moving, but he can't move. He can't build and move, so he will just be forced to retreat. As you see, he goes back behind that little radar installation. T2 Missile Launcher is online, going after some T2 Mexes here against Squealer as well. So Squealer just receiving the pain this game. Outbound from Team 2's Northern players. We did see an attack from a gunship over here to the north, but it doesn't look like it got very well. And all of the wall sections look like they just got control K. Oh, man. Gorther, you just built them all just to control cam, you mad lad. You can see that broadsword is online. Advanced radar coming online here for Carl Marks. He does have T2 and has gun already, so he's going to be pretty beefy here. 80 hit points a second just with that nano repair. Doesn't have any veterancy, so... Definitely needs to get on that front line and start getting some of that metals pinned to his chest. T3 is coming online here for Godzilla. A in the southeast. His air grid being nice and plump. I'm kind of surprised the Nazi Kenny Lee go for air. You know, it's you know, kind of leaning to that just due to the fact he built an air facility, but maybe he just wanted to pump out his own bombers or air scouts. It's always nice to scout yourself because you can always just build a T1 air facility. We do see a transport on board. The north, uh, sorry, there are some Othams on board this transport in the north and is being shot up by some interceptors. I don't know if it will land. The ASFs, oh, they're going to get pretty close. It's not going to work. That transport will be shot down and those Othams will be killed off. Definitely unfortunate here for Team 2. I did love the attack vector, but it just wasn't enough. The ASFs were too far close to the north. Would have been better to probably just drop them maybe even here or something. I mean... When the air player's up there in the northwest, it's kind of hard to just bring in a couple of, of uh, transports and not get spotted. Green, I can have transport, please. Says Carl. Looks like he wants to bring in some support from his back line. Let's see if Team 1 gives him a Continental or not. At least a T2 at a minimum, but uh, Continentals are always nice because they are T3 transports, and they are pretty beefy. They have their own shield generator, so definitely can just shake off a couple of shots. Colossus on that front line here for Team 2's Kenny Lee. And he's trying to force back Team 1's combined lineup. A lot of Team 1 artillery here just rain and fire on board that Colossus. Colossus going to die and probably should have moved up a little bit further, but those units will retreat. This will give a lot of mass to Team 1. Team 1 also has their own Colossus, and it's probably just going to sit up on this upper plateau and just shoot from the higher ground. Ah, it's definitely a disappointment here for Team 2. That's a lot of mass to give your opponent, especially early in this game. Kind of wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a T3 nuke or maybe a, maybe a start to an artillery. It's a little bit early to see that, but you never know. There could be a player that just rushes you know, game enders and calls it a day. We do see Ilmer in the middle of the map trying to face off against these T1, T2, and T3 army outbound from Korn. Horns Commander is no longer on that front line. He's actually returned back to base. We'll see if he keeps the missile launcher on board, but for now he will. And we do see Team 2 as Ilmer has reclaimed this Trimex position for himself and for his team. And is now starting to hook and isolate those remaining forces from Korn on the southern side of the middle. And the, I love how the artillery, those uh, demolishers are actually firing northward to take out the harmages that are just... Oh, receiving that artillery fire. Ooh, that's got to hurt. Missile launchers are inbound, taking out those mixes as well. Region Aura is done. Advanced Region Aura coming online here for Carl Marx. He's going to go for just the the bulkiest of Seraphim loadouts here. There he goes. 35,000 hit points on board, and that's default. Not default, but that's zero veterancy, which means he'll get up to 270 regen per second which is so many hit points it is so many hit points and he even gifts regen to his nearby allies so that even makes it even worse to deal with that army but you see the colossus strolling in by itself grabs that little uh sniper bot that's gotta hurt and those sniper bots and harmages will retreat does team two have a way to fight this no they don't second colossus is coming online there isn't a Cybran player down here, so no Megas online. 
Kind of surprised not seeing somebody on Team 2 gift over that tech. Having hives is very, very useful. But I think Team 2 is focusing elsewhere, spamming out those Rascoms, ratcheting up that eco here for Mori. Team 2 now back in the lead once again at 1.5k mass, speaking of reclaim Team 1 at 1. Point, sorry, mass, 1.3k on the board here. Gloss is actually going to rotate northward and go in this direction. Team 2's player of Godzilla A is there, has a stealth scatter shield online. He's going to build some mass fabs as well to ratchet up his eco. But this could be devastating here against Godzilla if this Colossus moves in in that direction. Team 1, can you see much? Not really. They do see a Pigeon and they do see that stealth field. That's all they see. A couple of T2 bangers online to deal with any sort of air scouts. Oh, they just ripped through those hit points on board. Those air scouts are very flimsy. And the Colossus looks like it will charge at least a little bit. Tickle Cannons will do absolutely nothing against that Colossus and just get ravaged by it. I thought I heard some sort of explosion. I guess not. Uh, maybe it was a Rascal. I don't know. Assist my Ravager, says Godzilla. And in this lineup, we do see the Ravagers are coming online. This will maybe hold off the Colossus, or at least dissuade it from coming that direction. The Colossus will retreat nonetheless, so those Ravagers aren't really necessary, but it's nice to have. And I think those are missiles? No, those that's my Asthma Fire coming out from the southern base in the middle here for Team 2, shooting at that Colossus. But do you see some Titan actually Titans. We see some Harbingers online facing off against those Percy's. They will definitely not win that fight. And as I was mentioning at the beginning of the game, kind of bobbing and weaving between these little hillocks, there is a chicken online. Looks like it was uh, some resources were donated by Mythologist or Karl Marx, with all, most likely Mythologist, to build said chicken because corn is a UEF and doesn't have this kind of T4 experimental assault bot that all of the other factions have. You have the Monkey Lord, you have the Colossus, and you have the Chicken slash the Megalith. Because the Megalith isn't necessarily the, like, mainline assault bot. That's usually the mon Monkey. But the Crab is what usually people build after they build their first couple of Monkeys. But this uh, Miasma is just going to feel the pain now as Corn rips through this front line and will continue on eastward. Team 2 needs a defense in that measure. There are a lot of Redeemers and harbingers but i would prefer percy's kind of surprised maybe this colossus will just kind of edge on just stand on the edge of the map and just kind of shoot over this map is weird says godzilla it's not that weird i think game render will finish it says godzilla oh i mean maybe which maybe is indicating that they'll go over that direction Let, let's make something <laughs> says godzilla yep that's definitely what that means Team 1, are you building any sort of uh, game menders or have any sort of thoughts in that regard? I see a chicken being built. I see Nuclear Limiter SMD, air grid being plumped on the edge of the map. SMD already online. And chicken as well. We do see Karl Marx starting to inch his way forward. There is a Monkey Lord online here for Mui. I think that's, I think all those wall sections were destroyed due to part that Team 2 could actually move in reinforcements. But the chicken is staying strong is uh, being guarded by some Percy's, but oh, Team 2 could do something about this gunship coming online. It is a Spectre. It's a lot better than a Stinger, that's for sure. And we do see some... Sorry, those are Nathas coming in, and a lot of ASAPs protecting said Nathas. But they're not going to do a lot of damage. They're going to take out the shield generator, the Mobile 1 the Parashield. Still don't see any movement here by Team 1 on the southern edge, except for that one Colossus again, just kind of just pushing back Team 2 ever so slightly, uh, just forcing them to be denied this Trimax constantly here. And those Harbingers are being ripped to shreds now. Team 2 needs to retreat, but they're just going to have to go for it and deal some damage to that Colossus. They're not going to do as much as they probably would like with that vacuum arm constantly sucking up one or two of those Harbingers. And there it goes. It, all those units are killed off. Colossus is inbound. Facing off against a T, not a T1, but a one-star veteran C Colossus outbound from Crow. We do see that Team 1 is regaining their position in the middle of the map, forcing Ilmer back. And he is, Calm has retreated, but Team 2 doing the same move they did earlier on against Squealer. He is just suffering this game. This base will go down, and there are now Bricks and a Monkey Lord online. And that is going to be devastating here for a player on Team 1. He might just... Control K and give everything he has left over to his teammate. We do see the chicken actually being moved up by Mui's teammate. Uh, let's see, who was that? That was... That was Gorthwal. 
if I'm pronouncing his name right. Now the Monkey Lord is actually going to rotate northward. There is still a T3 mechs online. Probably should kill that off. Bricks go, nah, it's probably a good idea though. Strategic launch, you make a good point. Got to kill the mass off. And this attack in the north is going to just um, commence with just throwing anything and everything they have. Again, Carmox is on the front line with the advanced region, advanced nano and gun commander. Chicken probably should target the comm directly. But it's chicken fire versus chicken fire. There's a bunch of AA nearby to prevent any sort of incursion from Team 1's air. But this definitely leaves something to be lacking here for Team 2 as most of those offens are done and dusted. Karl Marx is just the savior for most of his men here. The Iron Storm will take out some of those offens just because it does so much damage so much so very quickly. But uh, that's mainly the reason why Team 1 held that front line is that calm had that region or it's just devastating. We see Ravagers being built in the bases here for Corn and for Neutron. This will force this army back, not allowing them to get any sort of advantage in that regard. But did take out an entire enemy player's base, essentially. It's a regulated squealer to this section of the map, and that's it. He only has, what, 12 mass per second, essentially knocking him out of the game for the time being. I wouldn't be surprised to see him maybe get control of the ASFs just to kind of not necessarily be more useful, but kind of stretch out the APM a little bit. Easy kill with Micro, says Godzilla. I don't know what. I'm scouting now. Back. Easy kill with Micro. Don't know what he's in reference to, but maybe he's talking about down here, maybe? I don't know. Team 1 is building an emissary, the best T3 artillery in the game, in my opinion. And Crow is going to build it. I don't see any sort of efforts to do similar things from Team 1. I think it's just that T3 artillery. Is Team 2 going to build that game ender that was mentioned here by Godzilla? Uh, looks like maybe it's going to be a Maevor given that formation. Artillery says Mui. Yep, they do notice it. And Team 2 going to build a bunch of mass fabs it looks like. Actually, yeah, a bunch of mass fabs to scale that eco up. Doesn't want to go for the Rascom variety like Mori is doing. But again, his advantage is it's mobile. The downside is is that it's a little more costly. So, kind of the, the trade-off. But the Monkey Lord is going to intercept those forces outbound from Carl. Carl just going to keep pushing, regening that chicken at 285 hit points a second. It's just an absolute horde. It is an absolute just monstrosity of what the Seraphim Commanders can do in this game. They're essentially their own experimental... And Team 2 will have to consolidate forces. There is a Otham on board that transport. Oh, that's going to hurt. <laughs> uh, I don't know where that is going, but Ice Crow says mass for Artie. We can see the buildup here. Karl Marx will regain this piece of map once again. Please don't reclaim all of this. this <laughs> oh, talking about Neutron. I think I need some back. 3GC, break this. This Kenny. Uh, no. No, you need about maybe four or five just due to the fact that Team 1 has PD and a bunch of T3 uh, units and another Colossus coming online. It's not going to be enough. You probably need at least four at the minimum. Or three GCs and maybe a chicken. Maybe that'd be enough. And just send the chicken in to take out everything else. Chicken, speaking of which, is on the north side charging against that base. I think it's out of range of the commander. Yes, it is, which means its region is severely diminished. And those Othams are now inbound to support it. You can see those just lining them up and supporting the bigger, more taller experimental. There's a chicken on Team 2 side of the map standing on the high ground. And the chicken notices that and goes, hey, no, 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 not okay. You can't have the high ground. That's that's mine. That is, might be too late here for that chicken. 310 hit points, but it's not going to be enough due to all that firepower. That is inbound. Monkey helps to finish that off with the chicken support. Carl will have to retreat. He cannot face the amount of DPS coming off of these units. And now most of these Optimus will receive uh, the diminished amount of HP per second, or zero for that matter, that they were receiving earlier. But the Iron Storm will slow Team 2's advancement on Carl, giving him enough time to retreat at the bare minimum, if not be able to amount some sort of counterattack here pretty soon. We do see some gunships being built up by the air player of Team 1, just kind of holding position here to the north. And how are those experiments? Those experimentals. Their artillery going. Already halfway done here for Team 1. Team 2. There is an emissary started here for Kenny. And is that going to be a Maver? I don't know. It looks like it might be one. 
And we'll see. They, the the pigeons feel a little bit further out than they should be. We'll, we'll see if that ends up being the case. Massive amounts of T2 artillery being built to try to slow this chicken in the middle. There are two chickens now for corn. Team 2 does have a Colossus, but I will bet on those two chickens every day of the week. In the northern section, chicken is moving in from corn as well. Probably going to take out a couple of defenses. Some of AA. There is a Rascom just kind of hanging out. Those do produce 11 mass per second. Don't want those going to waste. And Team 1, how's that defensive line looking? Well, 1, 2, 3 Colossi are online. Team 2 has 1, 2, 3 online as well. I still don't think they have enough to break this formation here. And even if they do, Team 1 can easily fall back. They have a couple of T2 PD as well as a couple of strats. And, of course, they can spam up more and more defenses if they need to with more Oblivions back here and some Team D to pretend protecting any against any from nonsense but that emissary does finish off here for ice and i'm assuming he's either going to attack the air player or his mirror well technically his mirror is up here to be fair but probably the air player at the minimum or if team one has noticed it, the artillery being built which they have they probably target that team two needs shields online immediately we do see neutron sending in his spy planes to get a nice readout on his opponent Donut is almost online here for Team 2. Team 2 doesn't have... Oh, it's close. Team 2's Godzilla has 177 with 16 bingo on fuel. And Team 1 has 266 with 8 bingo on fuel. Team 1 has the advantage. So going for Zara is kind of dangerous. It's a lot of mass to devote to that experimental. That could be going into other things. But, uh, I mean, if it... If the ASF from Team 2 are able to take out the ASF from Team 1 with this being as the, actually the bait, that might be enough. Don't push, please. There's Godzilla. And the pings go out. Crab is going to push, and this might be enough to just poke. Why, says Kenny. Uh, just use them as defense and win with artillery. But Team 1 already has their own artillery. Going to build a second one as we speak. That artillery focused on... Team 2 is artillery at the current moment. I mean, they're already down to deficit. They need to do something to devote Team 1's mass. And building, an art building a couple of experimentals and forcing Team 1 to engage, especially at range, would do it. You can see all those defenses are now crumbling just with that one crab. Mass, me or red, says Godzilla. Uh, problem, says Ice Crow. If you lose your army, game is over, says Godzilla. I mean, yes... Especially with Team 1 having three experimentals down here. Because you are not... Because you are making Artie now no mass. And Emissary Fire will hit. Take out a shield. And at least take out the capacity 4 shield. And he's building T3 artillery that... Uh, that uh, I mean, the P-Gen looks... Looks weird. Why does this formation look weird? Hmm. I thought he was going to go for... Game Ender or something. That's disappointing. We do see the attack slowly encroaching on the Team 1's territory. You can see that crab being used at the best range possible, just forcing Team 1 to just slowly lose all of their forces. If they engage, Team 2 wins this fight because they'll be out of range of all the defenses. T3 Artillery Mobile at that, trying to force back Team 2, but it's not going to be enough. We have some Harbages running back and forth to keep them busy. Now I have to fight Aerosets, Godzilla. I mean, you don't have to. If Team 2 has enough T2 and T3AA, it's not going to matter. But, I mean, it might. I don't know. I heard explosions happening. Where are they happening? Go out to Colossus in the middle. We have a fat boy online. I could see... Well, that's a lot of AA from those Cougars. I could see the donut being used against that. But, uh, I don't know. I'm a bit behind because I'm making Artie. This Godzilla, don't push, please. Sits Godzilla. I mean... If Team 2's Kenny can just slowly, you know, deal with this front line, it will force Team 1 to come back down here and build more defenses or more experimentals. But we do see another experimental coming online here pretty shortly. Second artillery already in the yellow. Actually, the middle yellow. And close to green at that mat at that fact. But, I mean, Team 1 has a lot of mass at their disposal, and they are not, uh, not going to waste time. Building more experiments, which they are, but they're not going to devote all of that attention. It really has to be a concentrated attack. There are two crabs in that line. This must be enough to poke. And those experimentals might be given the go-ahead to go after those crabs. 
I mean, that's a lot of firepower. Team One uh, Mythologist is losing mass income right now. Problem back. There's uh, Godzilla, and we see that crab going after Team One's commander of Karl Marx. He's trying to dodge, but he will get killed off. Team Two gets the first kill on their side of the map, accredited to Mori, and it is now a 5v5 game at 39 minutes on the clock. And the Colossus will now engage those crabs, and those Colossus will die. They might get one of the crabs. But this forces Team 1 to engage. There are five Colossi online. It just can't eject him yet. Ooh, suicide. It's over, I think. Finish this GC fast. The cra if the crab can get out of range, this could be enough. Oh, 2,000. Oh, it's not enough. All those harbingers are going to die. Oh, that's going to hurt. That's a lot of Team 2's T3 units. There are a decent amount of stingers inbound. Terrible gunship. Very, very bad unit. Look how fast they just get ripped to shreds by that AA. Colossus focusing on the Colossus. If Team 2 was able to keep that uh, crab, they definitely would have won this fight hands down. And they will still win it, but they'll take massive casualties because it. Colossus focusing on Colossus. Crab doing tons of damage to assist. This Colossus will die. Team 2 will lose this Colossus, but they'll probably keep this one. There's a lot of T3 gunships now coming online with more support from some AA coming in from the rear be rear line. And uh, I mean, if they can take out the, the gunships, it might just be enough. The gunships now targeted onto the AA because they know if they get taken out, this is over. Team two might, no, not gonna bring their AA steps to bear. Oh, I don't know. All the experimentals are down, but it's just the air they have to deal with. All this mass for Team 1 to scoop up. Team 2 needs to stay here and claim all of this. But they won't. They will not be able to. Colossus will die. Grab will die. That is a ton of mass. How much, in fact? 200,000 mass on the field. And essentially... Uh, 100,000 plus of it is on just that little corner. The ASFs have to engage. They have to go in. Not all of them will be... Actually, all of them will be sent. Never mind. Emissary Fire is still targeting the Emissary here for Team 2. Second Emissary being built here by Kenny. Second Emissary is completed here for Ice. Going to build her third. Most likely here pretty soon. Grab still online. Second Crab coming in to assist. And if Team 2 can grab this mass and bring it back to base, that might be enough. Shields are down around Kenny Lee. Oh, there goes the Emissary Fire. Pigeons are down. Oh, and there he goes! Oh, that's gotta hurt. Team 2 loses Kenny Lee. It's now a 4v5 in favor of Team 1. Emissary, to be fair, is still online somehow. Godzilla's saying useless. Me, question mark, most likely says Kenny. Give base. There's, uh, I could have walked over his base, but uh, I don't know. There's some salt going in between these two players. The Emissary does end up getting killed off. Look at the map. I mean, I am looking at the map. What do you want me to look at? Team 2 has done a decent amount of work in pushing the northern line. And Team 2 in the middle has lost it, essentially. Team 2 having to devote some resources to stop this push. The fat boy got taken out and one of the chickens. But you, Everyone says God's a crap player, but I used to say you're all right. But forget that. I mean, like I said, if Team 2 can get the, the mass under control, it would be enough. And just send some harbingers to go after those T3 artillery down there. What's stopping you to push? Reclaim, says Kenny. Again, Team 2, if they're able to get the mass, might be enough. Duke is online. Second one coming online as well. I feel like if that Duke was targeting the emissaries, that would have been enough. But uh, I guess not. Let's see. I die, says Neutron. The artillery actually focusing on the air grid here to the northwest. And will it be enough? The shields aren't really that strong around this UEF base. There's two artillery online? There's one here. Where's the second one? I thought I saw two shots coming in. Is the one up here? Oh, no, there's a, a hover thing. Oh, there's a disruptor over there. Team 2 has gone for the T3 artillery. Oh, it takes out a nice section of Team 1's air grid. I mean, half of it's gone. You can see the artillery raining in. Oh, it's just her. It's shields are collapsing. One fatty stops two megas and two chickens. This Kenny. Oh, the one up there. What are you talking about? 
Scheme two now going to play it a little bit safe and close to the chest. Chicken going to guard the reclaim. Chick no, chickens. We have some engineers coming to scoop it up. The crabs can easily take out that chicken. I don't know why they're just sitting there. Like, and there's a monkey too. There's two monkeys and a chicken. Could easily take out. Sorry, two monkeys and a two crabs and a monkey versus one chicken. I think my brain is broken a little bit today. But the donut gets killed off at some point. Don't know when that happened, but uh, it did. Maybe it got killed off by AA. The Colossus versus Chicken and Percy's uh, with some Miasma Fire. Uh, I think the Chicken will be fine. It is a four-star Chicken versus a zero-star Colossus. Yeah, it definitely goes to that Chicken. Pick A, safe up, says Kenny. I'll probably be talking about the artillery landing in most likely. Second, uh, Duke is online. And again, Team 2 has more artillery up here. Second, Disruptor almost online. And Hovatham almost online as well. So that's going to be five artillery soon here for Team 2 with a nuke as well. I mean, Team 2 didn't go for Game Ender, but they definitely went for Game Ender in the form of artillery. Third, Emissary is coming online here for Team 1. I don't know if it's going to be enough. We see an exp Oh, no, that's not an experimental. It is a Hovatham coming online for Team 1's Mythologist. Everyone getting into that T3 artillery game. We have a satellite online here for Corn, And again, the air grid is being ripped to shreds. I mean, it might be worth it to disengage the air. Team 2 will lose most of their air, if not all of it, but at least they would take out most of the air. Disruptor coming online here for Godzilla as well. Just trying to spend mass, I guess. Yeah, just trying to... He has 50,000 mass in the in the bar. That is a lot of mass. Shield is starting to collapse. Oh, this is not looking good for those Disruptors. Shield is being assisted by a lot of drones, but it's being depleted very, very quickly. Here comes another shot. And artillery now targeting those uh, emissaries. And it's not stopping. We even see shot for just back and forth there. We see some artillery coming out from Team 2 from the northeast. Both disruptors focusing on that emissaries. And with four artillery raining in, that's going to do it in. It doesn't matter. Sorry. Unless you're heavily assisting a couple of shields, it is not going to be enough. And there goes the P-Gens. They are down. Disrupt uh, sorry, emissary still online. Oh, that's a lot of firepower. How are those doing? They're doing fine. So, yeah, this is just done and dusted. There goes the P-Gens. There goes the first emissary. Crow might just die because of the P-Gens he's standing next to. You. That's never a good thing. We saw what happened to Kenny earlier on. Shield on board. That commander is down, but all the P-Gens are dead. If this cascades, I think that might kill him. Ice Crow might just... Oh, all of the uh, Rascoms go up in smoke, and Ice Crow is perfectly fine. Nuke is released from its chambers. And looks like it's going to go after the reclaimed slash experimentals that are sitting right here. This chicken is almost dead. 100,000 mass killed on board that chicken. And all of those uh, cougars just going to run into some miasma. That's not going to feel good. Batty says uh, Kenny Lee. And the first nuke of the game, 45 minutes on the clock. Kaboom! Takes out a decent amount of that AA. And, of course, like I said, kaboom. Very pretty nuke. Love the way it looks. And the ASF are going to look like they're going to engage. This looks like this is Team 1's last-ditch effort, at least on the southern side. Five Colossi, one Fatty, and one Chicken versus three Crabs and a Monkey. Team 2 probably could just build a, a Monkey very, very... Uh, not a Monkey, a uh, Fatty pretty, pretty quickly. But uh, three Experimentals on one Crab, but it's not going to feel good. The ASF will not engage... Corey says, or sorry, not Corey. C. Cor I don't know what he meant. C. B. Ray. What is going on? So lame. Artillery now raining in on this position. The Havatham was almost constructed, it looks like, given the bar that's on those engineers, but that's not going to finish, unfortunately, for Team 1. And again, now with five, ex five artillery almost online. Actually, probably six, excuse me. I forgot that disruptor right there. It might be enough. Chicken is going to just barge through the front door. Crab is coming online. There will be some sort of saving grace. Team 1 needs to keep going. Crabs are able to fire from the low ground. <laughs> just tall enough, right? Just tall enough to ride the ride. 
We're not going to go anywhere, unfortunately, here for Team 1. First Colossus is in the yellow, falling into the red here pretty soon. Tickle Cannon's coming online. Chicken's going to barrel on through him. The Disruptor is the main target. Crab is now online. And the Colossus might get enough to take out a Disruptor. And Monkey now being spammed up as well. And I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, unfortunately. Even if Team 1 can take out a couple of artillery, Team 2 still has a nice base in the northeast. 20% already done in or reclaim. There's Kenny. And there goes that one disruptor. Monkey coming in to assist. Mon looks like the Colossus will retask onto the Monkey Lord. Don't want that getting in close range. Monkey just going to barrel on through it. The Ravagers have been spammed up as well for defensive measures. First Colossus is down. Second one will die right here. Third one will die right there. Three more Colossus escorting that one fatty. Fatty will not make it. And it uh, looks like that crab's having a disagreement with that environment. But it's uh, not going to matter. The defenses are online. Team 2 has this. We have some gunships inbound. A missile? I don't know what that was. But there it goes. Disruptive fire. Not disruptive fire, sorry. Broadsword fire raining in. Ravager fire raining in. Crab fire raining in. Looks like <laughs> the Colossus grabbed an engineer. But there it goes. It's just the end of all those experimentals. Two more online. Can we quit? Says Ice Crow. 47 minutes on the clock. One more Colossus. No Arties. More focus on defense. <laughs> Three chickens mid now. I'm not talking about right there. I'll take a look at that pretty soon. Look at the Ravager fire. Look at it just rain in and kill off that Colossus. And in the north, Ice Crow just says, I'm done. See ya, bye. I'm just not going to deal with it anymore. And Mythologist Control Case as well. He sees the writing on the wall. It's now a 3v5, and sorry, 3v4 in favor of Team 2. And Satellite over top going after some shields. Well, that doesn't mean a whole lot. A chicken, a crab, and a colossus walk into a bar. And they see four chickens. What happens? Let me know that in the comments. Fat Boy is still hanging out here for Team 1. Trying to force back Team 2 at least slightly. But two crabs are online. I feel like at this stage, this might be the last ditch effort here for Team 1. Now in the middle section of the map. They will probably kill off the crab, but uh, that probably will be it. You see the slow-moving balls of fire plasma are raining in. They will kill off the crab. There it goes. The chickens rotate to go after the Colossus, but two of the chickens are already down. Ion Storm is active. Team 2, will they chase? No, they will not. Team 2 will get the better end of the deal in that regard, and Team 2 will secure the borders. There's another chicken inbound as well. Artillery now raining on the rest of Neutron's base. It is not looking good here for him. He's running for the hills. Awasa Bomber is online. And I don't know where that's going. He still has air control by a decent margin, I would assume. I haven't done the numbers here. 291, so essentially, actually, no, 118 bingo on fuel, so 400 essentially versus 200 so it's a two to one advantage and with a bomber i don't know if it's going to do a whole lot of work it's definitely going to look pretty though but it's not going to be a whole lot of work that we do see those janus are inbound the they're going to go after the aa hey, i guess yeah i guess they're going after the the bouncers but that's not going to do a whole lot unfortunately for them i was saw bomber is online moving into those experimentals just going to receive some plasma to the face. Oh, right next door. There it goes. Kaboom. Takes out a decent amount of hit points on board both those experimentals. But now they're being swarmed by three chickens. Two from one side, one from the other. Chicken and Colossus rotating around, trying to dance. And looks like the chicken just going to suicide on top of those other chickens here for Team 1. Colossus is down. That Ion Storm going to be very well positioned in the middle of all these chickens. One chicken trying to make it out of there, but Ion Storm is going to engage. Bomber tries to make it. Oh, takes out a chunk of the ASFs in that regard. Doesn't kill off any of the, the uh, artillery, though, but does take out a decent chunk of ASF. Ion Storm doesn't take any of those experimentals out, and now we have two chickens. Sorry, three chickens. Forcing back Team 2 now on this northern side. It's now chickens. It's uh, just a bunch of chickens. So many chickens. Everyone likes chickens. Sound like uh, Ed from uh, Ed and Ed. I like chickens, Ed, eh? That's what it sounds like. And all those ASS from Team 1 are now going to just airlock or try to airlock Team 2. 
Not going to go very well, but uh, they will come off a couple of uh, gunships. Fight back, says uh, Neutron Fight. <laughs> Neutron does have, what, one, two, three, well, three and a half bases. He does have a decent amount of mass income still at 1.3, I say decent, but 1.3k mass income. Four experimentals leading the charge now on the southern side of the map versus one Colossus. That's not going to go Team 1's way at all. ASF still posed a threat here for Team 2. Team 2 just going to sit in their bases and pump out artillery shells. Going to build that other Duke that was uh, stopped a while ago. It's just, it's just not looking good for Team 1. Team 1 has to engage Team 2 on the land. But, uh, I mean, they're making some progress on the northern edge, but uh, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Chickens and crab are rotating. And now we have a Colossus facing off against those chickens in the middle once again. Neutron just control K saying, I'm done with this miss. Because I can't handle it anymore. Team 2 loses another player. It's now a 2v4 in favor of Team 2. And those look like that Colossus will take out that chicken. But the Iron Stone will kill the Colossus if the chickens don't. And Team 1 just says, I'm done. Done with it. I'm not going to deal with it. Team 2 is able to launch a nuke at the last second, but that is it. This little picture of the nuke there. But uh, more, says Godzilla, more. But uh, let me know down in the comments how you felt about the match. Team 2's MVP, sorry, Team 1 or Team 2's MVP. I don't know. I feel like that attack down south over here by Kenny definitely allowed Team 1 a decent amount of break from Team 2. They were all, sorry, Team 2 got a break from Team 1. But Team 1 did have all this artillery here that was raining in on Team 2's doorstep. I do understand where both players are coming from, both from Kenny and from Godzilla, where Godzilla's like, don't push, just defend, defend, defend. If they want to attack, they have to come to us. But Kenny's like, no, we got to push. We got to force Team 1 to either engage us or, you know, we can run them over, essentially. And I do understand the viewpoints on both ends. I might just give the MVP... Oh, it's hard. I don't know really who to give it to. Team 2 lost the middle of the map. Don't I just don't know. Team 2 held the north pretty well, I'd say. I just They had a nice thing going. They pushed almost over here into the main base for Carl and for Neutron. I, would, I think I will say the MVP of the game, or at least the one that did, I think, a, just a decent amount of damage and slowed Team 1 down was Mui. He came in multiple times to this base here for Squealer and just took out his base twice at a minimum. It really slowed him down and allowed it te his teammate of Ilmer to get a little bit of a break and force back Squealer on the middle side of the map. So it definitely contributed a lot to just kind of getting some breathing room. And Mui was just like, well, I'm just going to just eco up, build some artillery, essentially what Godzilla was doing, and call it a day. So I feel like Mui maybe gets a little bit of the nudge for MVP, but again, let me know down in the comments how you felt about the match. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon for notifications when I post my content. And again, thank you so much for watching. I greatly, greatly appreciate it all the time and the attention, the eyeballs. I do appreciate it. And especially, of course, share this video with your friends, your family, your pets, anyone and everyone. And I will see all of you in the next one.